Now, this is a terminal. This is just my uh, favorite working place in a terminal. And I already created a hyperlist called screencast.hyperlist. Now, V is my shortcut for Vim, but I'll properly write it like this. Screencast.hl. .hl means it's a hyperlist. And uh, the hyperlist.vim plugin all automatically recognizes .hl as a hyperlist. Now, if you don't know Vim, you should really check it out. It's the most comprehensive uh, text editor there is alongside of Emacs. But Vim is uh, slimmer and has thousands of plugins. Thousands of them, thousands of plugins. You can do everything you can imagine in a text editor in Vim. You can even play Tetris inside Vim. You can have your calendars from Google Calendar inside of Vim. You can do anything and everything. Now, I write books, I write articles, I write all my emails, I write, uh, of course, hyperlists in Vim. Everything I, I write, I usually do it in Vim. Now, hyperlist in itself is a way to describe anything. It, it can be describe the whole universe, the state of the universe, the history of the universe. It can describe a project, a to-do list, uh, anything you can do in the flowchart, you can also do in a, in a hyperlist. Hyperlist is a way to describe anything in pure text. So let's dive into the screencast.hl. It's actually everything we're going to cover in this screencast. It's shown here. Now, the two first lines are in bold, white bold, meaning they have children. This item, short introduction to hyperlist, has a child. And this is the child. Point the audience to this link. Now, if you go to this link, you will find out everything you need to know about Hyperlist as a system. Hyperlist does not depend on Vim or any text editor in specific. It can be uh, written down on toilet paper. It's just a way to describe anything using just pure text. But since I'm using the Vim as editor for text, I have created a very comprehensive uh, plugin, which is called hyperlist.vim, which can do all kinds of magic, like this thing you just saw, where I just press space and I uncollapse, collapse or uncollapse, toggle between a collapsed state or uncollapsed state for a specific part of the list. Now, this part of the list, introduction to the hyperlist.vim plugin, has two children and both are in bold, meaning they have their own children. So, links and features. Now, I can also uncollapse to a certain level. If I do backslash zero, it uncollapses to level zero, or collapses, I would say, to level zero. If I do backslash one, it uncollapses to level one. Backslash two uncollapses to level two, and level three, and level four and level five, and that's all there is. This is the whole plan that we're going to cover this in this screencast. I'll go quickly through it. It's not going to be very, very long. So first of all, short introduction to Hyperlist. Well, point the audience to this link. Already done that. Introduction to the Hyperlist.vim plugin. Yeah, I talked about it. And links on vim.org, you will find the uh, plugin here. On GitHub, with all the descriptions and everything, you will find that here. Now, show the help file, colon, age, for help, hyperlist. Let's do that. Colon, age, down at the bottom of the screen, you will see colon, age, hyperlist. Here we go. Hyperlist is a way to describe anything, any state, items, pattern, action, process, transition, program, instruction set, etc. So, you can use it as an outliner, a to-do list handler, a process design tool, a data modeler, or any other way you want to describe something. This plugin incorporates encryption. You can encrypt any part of the hyperlist or take advantage of the auto encryption feature by making the hyperlist a dot file. I'll talk about that later. But anyway, here is a lot of introduction for the plugin itself. And here is the content for this help file. It has everything you need to know about how to handle a hyperlist and how to handle this plugin called hyperlist.vim inside of Vim. 
It's definitely one of the most comprehensive Vim plugins out there out of the thousands upon thousands of Vim plugins because it has, uh, I don't know how many features, but maybe a hundred features. So that's the help file. Let's go back to the screencast. Now features. Some of the features of this Vim plugin is that it obviously has some syntax highlighting. You've already seen some colors here. Tags which in hyperlist means something that you put in front of an item that shows, let's say, who's responsible to do this item, when is it done, like a tag that contains a date or, or a, a timestamp. Tags are in red. Now conditionals. Let's say you want to do this only on a full moon. Let's say bark at the moon only on a full moon. So we put if full moon then you do whatever stands in white after it. Now, if you want to do another condition, if a equals zero, then do this, or if mom is not home, then do this. Whatever you want to put in there is the conditional. Only do this item when this condition is met. A simple question mark inside brackets like this means it's an optional item. You can do it at your own discretion. Now operators and or XOR etc is uh, capital letters in a colon means it's blue and it's an operator. You can read about that in the hyperlist documentation. Links as you already seen on the top there is purple. Links are in purple. Basically I should have done this. I should have put this in angle brackets as well to show that it is a link and the same here that's also a link now numbers you can put numbers in front of uh, items to mark them um, and s numbers are also in purple they're often linked to like this here is a link inside a parenthesis. As you can see, parenthesis, text in parenthesis, or quotations are in teal. And hashtags, like this one, are in yellow. Hashtags doesn't have any specific uh, function. They only make things stand out, like Twitter. You can just hashtag something. And here, two items on the same line, separated by this little green semicolon, this one. This is actually the same as this. Now I will show the presentation mode. You can use a hyperlist to present some information. Let's just do this, G up, I'm in normal mode, and I do G down, G down. Oops, what happened? Whoa, it says here, show presentation mode, G up, G down and I went straight to the next line and everything else is collapsed. Now go G down again. Oh, it uncollapses the part I'm on and all these children and G down, doesn't do anything, D down. And when I do G down now, it collapses everything else and uncollapses the next part. Bang. G down, G down, G down, G down, G down. As you can see, it only shows the part I'm on where the cursor is, the red little thing here. So G up, 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 G up. Oh, here we go. This is the part I'm on now. So as long as I do, I can always move up and down with just up and down, but when I do G down, it uncollapses everything else and, or it uncollapses the part I'm on and collapses everything else. And then I will show highlighting. Highlighting uncollapses the whole list. You will see the whole list, but only the part of the list I'm on will be shown properly. The rest is in gray, as I will show now. Backslash age, and here we go. Now this is cute. Now you can see that the part I'm on and all the children beneath it are shown, but the rest is grayed out. This is even better as presentation mode, I think, but uh, whatever fits your, or fancy, suits your fancy. So that is highlighting, and I go back like this, 
and bang it just did complete collapse of the whole thing which is it gets you to the start now we have something called go to reference now as I said there is a link here inside here and if that link refers to something in the hyperlist it will jump you to that point in the hyperlist as you can say this link here if I do gr gr it goes here because this one starts with one dot space and so etc if I go to the other example features gr bang we're up at features so this is a way to jump around and list and then I will do something else I will add a checkbox to this line backslash v a checkbox if I want to check check it backslash v again now it's checked now let's add backslash large v just a checkbox if I want to check it with backslash capital V you will see that it's checked and the time date and time when it was checked is also added to the checkbox as you can see hyperlist uses the convention of a dot instead of colon between uh, the hour and the minute and that's because it doesn't want to be confused with a colon after a tag so that's why now then we can do encryption if you want to encrypt something you can actually encrypt any part of a hyperlist you want you can encrypt the whole uh, hyperlist and use it as a password hyperlist if you want but let's just do an encryption of this line specifically backslash set and down at the bottom it says enter bfcvc encryption password let's just do tt for the heck of it and confirm tt and here we go that's an encrypted line now if i want to decrypt it as it says on the child decrypt with backslash x i can do that backslash x and it marks the line tt and we're back and uh, I can even, if I collapse it, and I do backslash Z, it encrypts both lines. If I then want to decrypt both of them, I mark them visually by uh, capital V, and then backslash X decrypts both lines. Now I can do show all lines with the, ver with the word features. There are a couple of lines up here that shows that has the word features in it. Now I stand on this word and I press set S. Now everything else in the whole hyperlist is now collapsed except this line and this line because it has the word features in it and this line because it has the word features in it and this line because it has the word features in it. The rest are bold and collapsed. Now if I want to do hide all the lines that has features in it, I stand on this word and I do set age. And now all the lines with features in it are collapsed. And if I don't uh, remove all that, set zero. Now back to the starting point. And now everything is uncollapsed by doing backslash five because I want to see all the levels and I know there is five levels. You can do backslash up to 15, which is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, backslash F uncollapses the list down to 15th level. Now, show auto numbering, backslash AN starts or toggles auto numbering. So if I stand on this here, I can just do backslash AN. Now, as you can see at the bottom there, call toggle autonum. Now, if I go to the end here, I go to insert mode and I do this, then it will automatically number this. If I want to indent it under three, I just do control T. As you know in Vim, Control T is indentation, Control D is de-indentation. 
So if I want to do this one, uh, let's say I want to do uh, T and then auto numbering under there, I can do something and I want to T it there, it automatically numbers correctly. So um, then I'm going to put all the future items that are marked with a date into my Google Calendar. Now you can see this is a past date, 2018, that was last year. And it says this is not added as it is past due. But this one, because now we are, as you can see up here, we just tagged it. I did this screencast eight o'clock in the evening on the 4th of August. Now, obviously, the 9th of August at 1300 hours is going to be in the future. So this is a future event. And the way I do this, as it says up here, the future items to my Google Calendar is added by backslash capital G. Let's see if this works now. Capital G. And it says at the bottom of the page there, added one event. Let's see if this actually works. Now we're going to go here. Oh, here we go. This is a future event. And as it says here, this is a future event created by hyperlist.vim screencast.hl. And as you can see, this here is the part of the hyperlist. So this part is included in the description. And you can see it is uh, 30 minutes as default, and it's put in the exact time as it said in the hyperlist, like here. And you can have any number of future dates. Let's say you, you're creating a project hyperlist, and you want to put responsibles, etc. And then you can just do the backslash G, and all the future events are bang into your calendar. And you can also do specify what calendar you want to put it in, but I won't go into that because you can put stuff into a specific calendar if you want to, but this is now just the default calendar by backslash capital G. And these are just some of the vast range of features of this uh, hyperlist.vim plugin. Now, if you want to contact me for any questions regarding hyperlist in general or this hyperlist.vim plugin, you can Contact me at this email address here, g at isna.com. I should also note that my uh, webpage, as you can see up here, is isna.org. And there you will also find a specific page on Hyperlist, but you will also find a lot of other stuff I do, like books I write and uh, uh, programming I do, or music I make, or three dig digital artwork, photography, etc. Astronomy stuff and HP calculator stuff and, and all kinds of freakish stuff. So uh, knock yourself out or you can just contact me on g at isna.com and we'll have a nice chat. Maybe a coffee if you're in the vicinity or I'm in the vicinity of you. So until next time, signing off.